Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Max Hostelton production. We hope you enjoyed the rain thing, which is rated PG. Thank you. Rain thing. Dana Anderson hated the rain. She'd felt that way ever since her mom and dad had bought the little farm by the woods that ran along Dameron's Creek. The first raindrops would send her racing inside to hide in the corner as far from the door and windows as she could get. This surprised her parents. She had enjoyed playing in the rain before they moved here. Why do you hate the rain, they asked over and over. Her answer was always the same. The rain thing is out there in the woods by the creek, and it wants to get me. Bill and Dee Anderson worried about the change in their daughter. They thought maybe she'd overheard some of the old-timers down at the little country store telling tales about strange happenings years ago along Dameron's Creek. So they questioned her about the origin of the rain thing. I dream about it all the time, she explained. It lives in Dameron's Creek, and it only comes out and roams the woods when it rains. Well, even though they asked her again and again, she could never tell them what the rain thing looked like. It's big and shadowy and dripping, she said, and it's lonely. Her parents couldn't convince her there was nothing out there. They tried to reason with her, but she resisted all their efforts. Finally, her father asked, Why would the rain thing be after you? You haven't done anything to it. I told you, she insisted. It doesn't want to be alone. So it tries to take me with it on dark, rainy nights. Her father didn't know what else to do to comfort her, so he smiled and hugged her and promised, then we'll just have to stay with you on dark, rainy nights. Well, Dana was happy about that. Yet, way down deep inside, she was still afraid. Dark and rainy nights came often that year. Dana would pace the floor and close the curtains and claim that the rain thing was out in the woods, watching from the banks of Dameron's Creek. The weeks just before harvest brought hot, dry days, and Dana began to relax and play and look a little more like her old self. Bill and Dee Anderson began to hope that she had forgotten about the rain thing. Then, one day clouds began to gather in the west, and rain threatened to come in by nightfall. Dana watched tensely as her father hurried to the fields and her mother hurried to the garden. They had work to finish before the storm broke. Dana sat beside the creek, skipping rocks. She saw her mother stop several times between the rows and wipe her brow. Suddenly, she heard her scream. Dana dashed across the yard as her mother came staggering from the garden. Run, get your dad, Dana. Hurry, honey. Tell him a copperhead bit me. Well, Dana felt frozen, but her body was moving. Somehow, she reached her father in the field and made him understand what had happened. Then he was running ahead of her toward the house. By the time Dana caught up, her father was already bending over her mother, working frantically. He turned to Dana. I've done all I can, he said. I've got to get her to the county hospital. I need you to stay here and feed the stock. I'll be back as soon as I can. He picked up her mother and was gone before Dana had time to protest. Time dragged by. The late afternoon sky was already dark, and Dana could feel the rain in the air. She went to the barn early and fed the animals, but the approaching storm made them as restless and uneasy as she was. Back at the house, she tried to eat, but she wasn't hungry. She worried that her mother might die, and she worried that her father might get caught in the storm. She tried to think about what she should do if she had to spend the night alone, and she watched the clouds slip closer and closer. The night and the rain came together, but her father did not come at all. She locked the door and closed the curtains, and she sat listening to the rain drumming on the metal roof. When she couldn't bear the waiting any longer, she pulled back the edge of the curtain and peeked out. She could see nothing but the drops of rain on the glass. Nothing seemed to be moving, so she opened the window a little to see if she could hear some sign of her father. Who's going to stay with me this dark, rainy night, she said softly to herself. She was startled to hear a faint voice answer from way back in the woods. I will. She slammed the window, locked it, and stood there trembling. 
She wondered if it could possibly have been her father's voice answering her. Could the sound have carried on the water? Maybe he was coming along the creek in the woods and heard her. She cautiously unlocked the window and raised it slightly again. This time, she called directly into the darkness. Who's going to stay with me this dark, rainy night? From the middle of the woods, a voice answered more strongly, I will. With the wind and the rain and the distance between them, Dana still couldn't tell if it was her father or not. Dad, is that you? She called frantically. There was no answer. She leaned out to listen. She heard nothing but the rain. She wept silently, her tears blending with the raindrops on her cheeks. Who's going to stay with me this dark, rainy night? She cried. From the very spot where the woods met the yard, a strange voice said loudly, I will. Before she could move, a huge, dripping, shadowy, faceless thing came floating toward her from the trees. And this time, it wasn't a dream. Dana never knew that her mother survived or that her father made it home safely. When he arrived, the door was still locked. But Dana had vanished. Special thanks to Annika Robinson for help making this video possible, and thank you for all of you for making this Rain Thing video possible. I hope you weren't scared during this production, and I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully we will make videos like this in the future. Thank you.